Great, we can get started. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, we're joined by Leslie and Ricardo uh, from Kronos, and today's workshop is Building Your Web3 Games with Kronos Play. So I'll hand the mic off to Leslie. Hello, everyone. Um, so I would just quickly share the screen. Make sure you, you can see my screen, right? All good? Yeah, yeah so- all good. Uh, yes. Wonderful. Yeah, once again, I would like to say thank you to the organizer and also, you know, uh, it's a pleasure to have everyone here, you know, built together in this hackathon. So uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Leslie Chong, and also I have uh, our teammate Rick here. We'll be presenting uh, some of our exciting features on Chronos Flight in particular later. So uh, yeah, I'm Leslie, and I'm in charge of the developer relations of Chronos. In case if you have any question in the future, feel free to add me in the Discord channel, and I'll be there. So let's kick off with a quick overview of Chronos first. So Kronos is the first VVM compatible layer one blockchain that builds on Cosmo SDK. It is supported by crypto.com, crypto.org, and more than 300 application developers and partners. Okay, so the mission of Kronos is simple and also challenging. This is to make it easy and safe for the next billion of crypto user to adopt to Web3 with a focus on DeFi, NFTs, and GameFi. So if you're a developer joining this hackathon, you'll be like, why building on Kronos, right? So if you ask me, I would say Kronos is more than just a simple EVM compatible chain. What makes Kronos special is its unique position that links up the Cosmos ecosystem and the EVM ecosystem. In particular, Kronos is built on top of a technology called EVMIN, uh, which is an open source project that brings Cosmos SDK and its underneath consensus engine tend to mean together with the standard Ethereum practice. So um, Cosmos SDK and Tendermean has already been working well for many different networks and projects, which allows a high transaction throughputs and provide instant transaction finality. And it is also backed by formal research and has been robustly tested, implemented and adopted by many high profile projects. Uh, one very interesting part is uh, it also comes in a modular structure. What does it mean is uh, it offers flexibility regarding which application that are developed on top of it and how they are going to be developed. In particular, uh, it enables us to build a special module that called well, EVM module. Uh, very obviously that it allows EVM related logic to be executed at the top level while the Tendermint consensus engine would take care of all the consensus related logic at the back for us. Of course, one uh, very important thing uh, I would like to mention about Cosmo SDK is something that you might already heard of, it's called IBC. So uh, IBC, which stands for Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol, it allows chains to be connected, passing messages and transfer tokens natively at the protocol level. Um, at the time being, we have already been connecting to multiple Cosmo SDK based chain, uh, such as um, Crypto.org chain, Cosmos Hub, and a cash network, and we are expecting more to come. Simply speaking, I would say uh, Kronos is an EVM compatible chain that also comes along with all the goodies from the ecosystem of, Chrono uh, of Cosmos. Yeah. And on the value proposition, what makes Kronos unique is uh, the instant portability, well, EVM compatible that supports smart contract, of course, and bridges directly uh, come along with the IBC that we have just mentioned. Uh, low in friction, well, to use it with uh, high transaction throughputs and instant finality, transaction cost on Kronos is also relatively low. For developers, Solidity and also all the EVM toolings would just work out of the box which reduce a lot of friction for projects to migrate to Kronos. Next thing is, well, by looking at the on-chain activities, we can see a strong user uh, adoption to Kronos. Uh, we can see that Kronos is one of the top 10 chains that in terms of uh, TVL, with more than 900K of users, 50 million plus of transactions since we launched November last year. Finally, the most important and also organic part is the community. 
Today we can see that, well, on Twitter, hashtag CLOFAM ecosystem represent and representing an addressable user base of more than 50 million of people uh, all over the world, which means building on Kronos would put your dApps to a huge stage with uh, spotlights on. That means easy on RAM to your project for more than 50 million plus of user of crypto.com. Yeah. So uh, moving onwards, I mean, this is in a hackathon setting as a, for developers, um, from very basic solidity to triple hothead, open sapling, web3.js, well, you name it, all of your experience and EVM related knowledge can be directly applied to Kronos. In addition, we also have been continuously working together with many leading providers in the industry to further support on the infrastructure, data indexing, and our RPC endpoint side. Uh, this hackathon uh, can be a perfect starting point for you to build on Kronos. Even after this hackathon, we have extensive uh, developer support pro uh, programs for you to take your project to the next level. So one major highlight in our Kronos development toolkit is uh, Kronos Play, which is a gaming SDK that allows us to connect your games written in Unity or Unreal or C++ with Kronos directly. So what, what I do is I would firstly pass it to my teammate Ricardo to give us a more in-depth breakdown on, and demonstration of Kronos Play. And then later on, we would jump back in to cover more uh, extra developer resources and the prices for the hackathon. So I'll pass it to you, Rick. Fantastic. Thank you, Leslie. Okay. So yeah, let me quickly introduce myself before I start to share my screen, or maybe I can do the same thing asynchronously. So my name is Rick and I work alongside Leslie as an innovation blockchain engineer. Uh, and yeah, today I want to tell you a little bit more about Kronos Play for, for, for those of you who haven't heard of it yet. It's basically um, our, our SDK that we have been uh, working on for the past couple of months uh, and really since the beginning of the year, um, I, should, I should say. And what it really is, it's, it's, um, it's basically a collection of packages and dependencies uh, um, in, in the context you know, of, of Unity and Unreal, uh, which enable game developers to, to build uh, new games and, and existing games, uh, and perhaps also have the, the ability to connect uh, off-chain and on-chain data uh, in order you know, to make uh, some, some, some blockchain ma uh, magic also happening in those games. Um, at its core, um, from a Unity perspective, um, we have used Chainsafe, the Chainsafe Gaming SDK, uh, but we have been also uh, integrating uh, with the C++ libraries uh, for, for Unreal, for example. Um, obviously, uh, some of the uh, play cross-play features are um, that it gives the opportunity to, to get some um, data some insight, insightful on-chain data uh, such as you know um, metadata from nfts from your erc uh, 721 tokens um, but also you know other type of data that you might want to um, fetch into your games it also provides some opportunities in um, in, in in the area of wallet authentication and uh, authorization which has been a very trending topic uh, from what i've been hearing so far from game developers and then, um, as I mentioned before, the ability um, to to transfer tokens and uh, you know data that comes from NFTs uh, within within games. There's a couple of reasons um, why we recommend to build on Kronos. I'm not going to go through all of them, but some were mentioned already by my colleague Leslie. Um, obviously, you will know that there is a multi-platform support, which means that um, you can build on on several engines. Um, you can build on Unity. You can build uh, on uh, uh, on Unreal as well, and there's more to come. Um, obviously, there is uh, a lot of uh, opportunity around, you know, the global reach um, because we have a strong community that's expanding. Um, the fact that we focus on scalability is probably something to keep in mind, uh, and also the fact that you know we we aim to always provide the best interoperability as possible, since you know our protocol is uh, IBC based uh, with uh, basically interoperability and access to Cosmos, as my colleague Leslie mentioned before. Uh, roadmap: We have been working intensively on 
different elements. Um, for example, the crypto.com pay integration has been released uh, just recently. It is available on our documentation and I will go to the documentation in just a minute. Um, but there's obviously uh, some some other opportunities that we're working on, such as you know our authentication options uh, and also crypto.com NFT uh, packages. Um, I mentioned as well that we are actively working on uh, on the Unreal Engine plugins, as well as um, working on C++ as, uh, development SDKs. Some of the games, you know, that we have been working uh, with, um, a few are, you know, um, for example, uh, we, have, we have been working with Rolf Games, with uh, Demoli, uh, Dragon SB, Decentral Games, just to name a few. And I think, you know, before um, going too deep into these details, um, why don't we just have a look at the documentation uh, and show you how you can get started if you're interested to start to develop some interesting games uh, or even integrate some new features on, onto your game. So on the main page, whenever you go to uh, click on the get started button, you get to the Kronos Play quotation page. Um, you also find some other modules that might be very interesting, but I think um, let's keep it in the context of, uh, of, of the uh, Kronos Play SDK. You will see that the Kronos Play uh, SDK is divided in different um, topics. Um, so whenever you're interested to get started and build something on Unity, you have different um, uh, kind of uh, elements and tabs that you can explore. You have some um, examples uh, for login um, mechanisms. You have some, some script examples, which we're going to actually um, expand within the next uh, few days. Uh, and as I mentioned, you have the different uh, uh, core modules, such as you know the, the Unreal Engine plugin, uh, the Kronos Play, C++ SDK, um, as well as the recently released crypto.com pay integration. So why don't we have a look um, at the scripts? So it's, it's quite simple. They are based on, on the ChainSafe documentation. Some of you might be familiar already with ChainSafe um, as they have a really provided a really cool set of uh, scripts for, for Unity, which is uh, at the core of this SDK as well. Um, for example, right now you will find the EVM modules, uh, a couple of EVM modules that make use of our RPC method, um, which you can use whenever you want to query the EVM function uh, in, in Unity. We are also working on releasing um, the native um, version, meaning that you wouldn't have to use the RPC method anymore because we have recently launched our um, subgraph endpoints, which means that now uh, Chainsafe will natively support as well uh, native transactions, which means if whenever you want to get stuff like, you know, a batch of your NFTs, uh, you can do that without having to create for loops uh, or even um, whenever you want to query your balances and, and these sort of things, you don't really have to use the RPC method anymore if that's something you don't want to do. If you want to work with the RPC method, obviously the option is still available, um, but obviously this is going to be up to the developer and um, why not having both options available? So to get started, again, um, all you have to do, you can visit this page. Uh, you go to the Unity um, example in here. Then you have obviously all the steps on how to get started, the different RPC methods that we provide. Uh, um, you can choose whether you clone it from GitHub or you can just go ahead and download your SDK from here. Why don't we quickly go into the Unity editor? So I show you a couple of... Uh, scripts that I have prepared. So the first one um, is called, call it uh, ERC721 balance of Kronos. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, what it does, it returns the balance of uh, the, the assets that I own, the 721 assets. Uh, there's a couple of uh, parameters that I'm passing to the uh, option here. So basically, I want to chain the network. Uh, I want to get the contract of the NFTs and I want to get my uh, account. Now, you can make this a little bit more dynamic if you if you wish so. Uh, whenever you start to build your game, there's obviously some player prefs versions that make this uh, string a little bit more dynamic, meaning that whenever you log in and you authenticate, 
you will be able to just uh, replace this uh, with the dynamic uh, player press string. So if I close this and I run it, um, all it does, uh, it's basically printing the balance uh, once the promise is returned. So I'm going to close this and just choose my Unity editor. i uh, going to switch this one off, on, and then I'm just going to run it. And then we will see, OK. Here we go. So basically, um, it just printed the amount of uh, NFTs that I own. In this case, I'm using the testnet, obviously. So all of these NFTs are generated um, in, in our NFT faucet, which is also um, available in the documentation if you want to have something like the OpenSea kind of test uh, net where you can create some test NFTs and then query them into your game. That's also something that we provide. Now the second option uh, we can quickly test is the, the owner class, which uh, again, is, I think it's self-explanatory. Uh, what it does is um, it takes a couple of parameters in and checks for the owner of uh, a specific token ID that's part of a specific contract always on the test net in this case. So come back to Unity and run this very quick. Is that the right one? Yes. I'm just gonna print out obviously right, the, the address that I use for this test uh, NFT, uh, which is then um, indicating obviously the ownership. This is a, an interesting function because um, it, it can, in the context of a game, you know, you could uh, create some, some, some functionality um, that makes sure uh, that the specific ownership is being uh, identified within the game, for example. So it's quite cool. And yeah, then I wanna have a look at the EVM balance option, just this one. Um, now, for this one, we use the EVM function. Uh, and in here, uh, what this one does, it's, it's going to return the balance uh, based on, on the EVM function. So let me... Turn this one off. Okay, that's uh, basically the the balance that I have, my testnet balance. But uh, yeah, again, this is something that you can uh, use as well. You know, um, whenever you want to start building and you want to use a testnet, we have a faucet, which means that you can get uh, on a daily basis some some resources, but Leslie's gonna explain that in a minute as well. Now, another um, function that I want to quickly show you, another script is, uh, this one is probably one of my favorites because it, uh, it shows how you can replace uh, game texture, you know, um, with, with an um, NFT-based texture by using uh, the URI uh, option here in the ERC721 function. Um, so there's a couple of information, a couple of parameters I'm passing, the chain, the network, the contract, the token ID, and as well the RPC method. So some of you might be familiar already. There's some tricks that can be used with IPFS, um, particularly when it comes to getting data. Um, there's some, some, some guards at times, so it's better to just replace the IPFS protocol with the HTTPS protocol. Uh, and this way um, you won't uh, have those kind of problems um, that might even impact the performance of the query. Then the next step is uh, we use Unity web request to uh, get the information from the uh, URI. Uh, and once we await um, the web request, 
we, we create a response. And that response is basically going to uh, hold uh, the JSON object of the metadata that is being uh, fetched once we run the Unity web request. And in there, we want to store um, the image URI, which is going to be uh, under the data.image um, option available. Then what we want to do is always, we need to make sure that we, this is something, you know, it's, it's very repeatable. So I think um, there's a lot of smart ways to, to create maybe a function for this and then reuse it uh, every now and then whenever it's necessary to use it, uh, just to reduce, you know, duplication. Um, I, I think there's a couple of ideas. And then finally, we fetch the image uh, and display it in the game. So let me close my code editor and get back to my Unity editor. Let's run this. So as you can see, it's logging the information and then it replaces the, the sprite, um, the quad with the, with the new sprite, uh, which is basically the image that is being stored in that contract. And yeah, these are just a couple of examples. Uh, I know we are very short on time today. So if you're interested to learn a little bit more, there is a couple of interesting videos already on YouTube with some real game examples um, that we have been working on. So feel free to have a look at them. Um, but you know, I think the ideas in terms of development are uh, literally endless. So um, these were just a couple of examples. And maybe uh, before handing it over, uh, I have been working on, on um, different um, client examples that connect, you know, MetaMask and, 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 and smart contracts to, to save on chain data, uh, as well as images uh, to IPFS by using uh, front end applications such as Next.js um, to create mining web app applications. And there's a lot of uh, front end uh, libraries. For example, uh, I had been using React Morales very recently, despite the fact uh, that Morales is um, moving to Morales 2.0, I still thought it was a cool library to explore. Um, but yeah, that's just one of the examples um, of how to combine different frameworks really to create uh, off-chain and on-chain data and then really connect these to, to your game client, uh, whichever that might be, uh, whether it's Unity uh, or an Unreal Engine. And with that, I'm gonna pause it here. Yep. And I think there's something you wanted to show as well, Leslie. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Rick. Uh, that is actually a, quite a lot of like different demos uh, Rick and I already uh, demonstrate in some other workshop as well. So in case if you'd like to know more, uh, you can always you know jump to the uh, Discord channel and we can provide you with the links. So uh, yeah, so after the demonstration by, by Rick, uh, I would like to cover some of those like um, other you know, information about the support and also documentation and price. So on the support side, uh, the, the most native way to, to provide the support, and if you have any question, will be, you know, join this um, EDH Online 2022 um, Discord channel. And uh, we will be, me and my teammate will be there in the sponsor Hyphen Chronos channel to provide support over there. And uh, on the documentation, um, I think uh, Rick already showed you with uh, like this docs.chronos.org. And uh, I think uh, also something that very important is uh, many of the resources has already been provided in this uh, for dev developer side. You can see that uh, integration uh, with integration with uh, like different RPC endpoints uh, for testnet, mainnet, and uh, explorer, etc. And also this is some other uh, developer toolings in terms of. Uh, uh, price oracle and also uh, render number generators and Morales API support um, that the detailed documentation you can also find in here. Yeah, and also the next one is on the price uh, for this hackathon. We uh, we serve five prices, two uh, k each, uh, for any project that develop uh, develop and also deployed on Chronos mainnet or uh, testnet. So yeah, by with with that, I think uh, we can reserve some time for the, the QA section. 
um, see if we got any question from the chat. Yeah, I think there was a mm -hmm. question before. Um, so yeah. Bill Wolf was asking if um, if you currently support Game Maker Studio or if there's any Game Maker Studio support planned. Um, maybe I can answer the question. Uh, so to the best of my knowledge, we are currently not working on support for Game Maker Studio, but that doesn't mean necessarily that we won't do it in the future. I think um, it all depends uh, probably on 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 demand, uh, and um, probably we will ha we'll have to see uh, how many of um, the game studios we work with are interested in seeing uh, game studio support in the future. And uh, the more feedback we get um, from game developers like yourself, um, the more uh, it might be likely in the future that we will perhaps provide also support for Game Maker Studio. Yeah, and also. I think uh, if you have no experience on Uni Unity, for example, uh, in the cases like uh, Rick also, uh, b before like we kicking off this project, <laughs> uh, he also have like no experience on Unity as well. But turns out, uh, how was your experience in general? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Yeah, I started from scratch with Unity, so um, it was a bit scary at first. But uh, I think there's so much documentation. Maybe not too much, but there's enough documentation to get started. And I think that's what matters um, uh, in, in the principle, you know, to have enough uh, information, but also um, the the curiosity to learn and to 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 test stuff. I think that is what helped me to go through um, the the Unity implementation so far. So I think yeah, there's enough information to really get started, and once one gets started, you know, everything else just comes out uh, automatically. Yeah, right, yeah, thank you, right? And then I also saw a question, um, uh, would like to see whether the SDK compatible with uh, Ethereum mainnet. Uh, I think the, the short answer is yes, but uh, you would have to do a bit of like, uh, you know, modification in terms of the, the, the chain ID and also the endpoint that you, you choose. Uh, basically, I mean, uh, it, it, it supports all this uh, EVM compatible chain, given that they have a, like a similar uh, method calling, uh, ways of calling uh, the, the RPC endpoints, and also they, they support like similar methods on the EVM level. Uh, if that is the case, and then it is actually, you know, applicable to, to other chain as well. Okay. Let us see if that is um, any other question from the from the audience. It looks like that's it. Um, if anyone does have any questions, I recommend them to take it over to Discord. There's a Kronos uh, Discord channel under Global uh, ETH Online event. Um, yeah, don't see anything else. Well, thank you to both of you. Um, this was the first workshop of the day. We do have many more coming up today. Um, so I hope people join, uh, tune in. And uh, with that being said, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for having us. Bye. Have a Thank good one. Later. Bye bye.